Jesus. Amen. The word is here and amen. Thank you, God, for the privilege and the honor to be gathered amongst the saints. Thank you, O oh God, for the assembly of God's people together. Thank you for one accord. Thank you for your spirit in the midst of us. Thank you, precious God, for your good. Your mercies endure it forever. The Bible says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of his people be. Thank you for the gathering of God's people. Of this gathering of God's people, thank you for your presence in the midst of us. Thank you because you will open your word and it shall do us good. Amen. It shall build us up. Amen. It shall enlighten us. Amen. It shall bring forth light in the crevices of our hearts where darkness doth reign. Let the light of God shine upon our hearts, O oh God. Let it cleanse us. Let it purge us. Let it cause us to live on the word many days and months and years hence we worship you oh god we thank you oh god for our brethren oh god in the midst of us even from nigeria thank you for the peace of god upon their hearts thank you for the anointing of god even upon their lips thank you for grace even to minister in the presence of god Thank you, O oh God, because even as they speak, they speak as oracles of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. We worship you, O oh God, for the seed to the sower and for the bread that is available unto the eater. We bless your name, O oh God, and give you praise, O oh God. Because even as you minister to us tonight, Lord, our lives will never be the same again. Amen. Let your word bring counsel. Let it bring correction. Let it bring a lifting up, O oh God, into the presence of the living God. That walking away from this place, O oh God, our lives would have changed from when we came in. Let all the praise and glory be ascribed unto your name and unto your name alone. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good evening, brethren. I believe it's been a very long day for all of us. Amen. Yes, we did, the two of us. <laughs> because we've been indoor throughout. And um, we must be feeling more rested. Praise the Lord. Amen. You, brethren, you are very strong. <laughs> I think, uh, like the scripture says, that um, if great be your need, great also will be your strength. Uh, I'm not sure we are this rugged in Nigeria. <laughs> you come all the way. And uh, I think those who are closest to you are those in Lagos. <laughs> because the challenges they are handling um, suggest also that they have to be rugged. Um, Sometimes they are all driving like you do straight to the fellowship. And uh, right now, um, in fact, I would say they are the prime movers of uh, the ongoing crusade uh, at Agbawa, a place called Agbawa. They are the prime mover of uh, the ongoing crusade. The crusade started this evening. Evening in Nigeria. Already in the night. And um, we have uh, what we call the Southern, South Regional uh, Axis. Uh, comprising of uh, Lagos, Loring, Ibadan. But then they are really in the center of it. And um, they were sending some photographs as the crusade was going on. 
And, uh, they have danced around since about Tuesday. They've been dancing around the city, you know, trying to campaign and to announce. And you know, they are quite as rugged as you guys. <laughs> and uh, we thank God for all of that. Um, I don't know. I will not. I will not presume that uh, because I'm rested, then I can take all the time. So what we we'll try to do is just capture a few minutes and uh, be done. Amen. 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 Um, we began to say a few things on uh, Wednesday and um, they are part of my thoughts in recent times. Uh, if you speak about Revelation, I think uh, God has been so gracious to us. The entrance that God gave to us over the years. But then, you can speak about high sounding things. It's like a man who set about to build a house. Um, the higher the height of the house, the deeper is supposed to be the foundation. Mm. You know, the bigger the superstructure, then the stronger the foundation ought to be. And it's always good uh, for those in construction, for instance, that as you are raising the superstructure, it's good to check how solid is your foundation. Sometimes it's wisdom. If you have initially supposed that the superstructure is going to go so high, at some point, you check your foundation and discover that the thing you're not able to carry what you want to build. It's good to stop at some height short of what your earlier plan you see and i believe that the work that the lord is building around us is such a high and such a deep work that we cannot afford to keep going without coming back to check the foundation and that's what's been going on around me in recent times that um, uh, you may we may easily be deceived mm. if we go by the amount of information knowledge mm -hmm. that God has exposed to us. And uh, sometimes you speak the word that is like people are even brought under a spell. Mm. People are brought under a spell. I remember in Liberia. Um, we we are going to have this meeting and a flyer was just placed by the wall on the outside of the venue and this brother a bishop and uh, that has a good following and a good name and was driving past and um, officially maybe was not invited but then the venue we are going to use the head of that congregation is a friend of his so we saw him sitting by the side of his church assembly and stopped by and said, ah, what about this uh, banner, this flyer? He said, well, we've been inviting you to come for our meetings. You will not come. And you will not come because except they in their own setting are the ones organizing such a program. They feel humiliated, you know, to be invited by those lower down. You know, this was a bishop in that order. So, and well, he went. We came into town and he will sneak into the meetings. And he will be lost in the congregation. And um, this is a man who started out in the Catholic system. Who at the age of 14 was already questioning the system. And because his questions could not be addressed, and some eye up there told him that these are permanent structures you cannot touch, that you cannot change it, that we all met it like this, and we cannot change it. So you cannot change it at 14. So that was at what point God met him and moved him out of that system. And continue to seek the Lord 
you know, we encountered God in the Pentecostal powers and came that young man in his 40s, you no, know, had masters, well read, well cultured, exposed. In fact, he was, um, he was, he was, we have heard about the uh, young church. They said the fastest growing and yeah. the man was appointed as the African rep for yeah. Young Ito Church, you know, and some two more big international organizers, you know, to show how charismatic and how mm -hmm. they will sneak into the meetings. Mm -hmm. And at the end, he will be the one to ask the largest questions. Mm -hmm. And when he was asking the question to be to overturn all that we have said, mm. so we are like, is this man an agent mm. to confuse the general people? Not mean that something was going on in his heart. Mm. At the end of all those questions, he will go and buy some drink and send to us in the hotel. Mm. He's coming back, he will sneak in the following day. He will ask all these questions. Mm. But at the end, of one of our trips, he sent for us. He said we should please have a session with him. We wanted to ask some sweet questions. You know, at the end he said, well, God has, has spoken to him. Then we should go and pray. Whichever way we want him to be part of what is going on. And um, we saw his heart. We answered all his questions. And we said, okay, we have this meeting in April in Nigeria. We would like to be available. We said, we will cancel all these programs. And he came. Mm. This man will not go by the arranged transportation arrangement. You, this, somebody was coming to Nigeria for the first time. He knew how to catch a taxi mm. and locate the venue and be there first. And that was how he did it for the next several days until the last day of the meeting when from about 2 a.m. God encountered him accosted him arrested him for five hours at the end of the five hours he had been compelled under that arrest to enter into another level of covenant with God and that was the undoing he came back to Liberia he went and shot him in the season of fasting, he came out and announced that the church was disbanded and brought them into house groups. I was not going to keep anyone under himself, but that he was going to meet with them as God leads. So this time around, when we were around there, he told us that uh, he <coughs> will be having a series of meetings with people just to expose them and to and to and to refocus them mm. and then he began to perceive that he has taught the people to look up to him mm. but he's now retraining people to look away from him mm. <coughs> so gather them teach them train them and disappear mm. right now he's in michigan mm. he only came for about three days meeting but he says he was going to stay for about four weeks mm. so that the people can learn not to look up Jesus. to us. You know? So, the when I look at such situations, mm -hmm. and I look at where we are coming from, mm -hmm. and these are people that are coming right in the last hour. Mm -hmm. And if you are not careful, we'll be dancing there. Mm -hmm. This guy, he has lost all, all of them that have been so arrested in Liberia. Mm -hmm. They now know they cannot eat the offering. Yes, yes. They can't touch the offering again. Mm -hmm. So they have to begin to look up to God yes. to hand in comfort themselves. Yes. Now, and these are people that this world is coming to at the very latest hour. Mm -hmm. But they are running so fast that if we do not check again our foundation, mm -hmm. we'll suddenly discover that uh, we are taking a backseat and God forbid. Mm -hmm. That's why it's very important for us to, after we have run, we come and check. Mm. <laughs> Is the condition okay? Are we still safe? Mm. So that running we can run with certainty. Mm. 
Mm. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord began to speak from Matthew chapter 7. It was about the foundations. And we're going to look a bit about his own example tonight. That's the Lord himself, the Lord's example himself. Um, Matthew 7, verse 24. He was speaking about two foundations. And we can look at those two foundations as two models. You know, they are like two models. And one model was a foundation made of rock. That's verses 24 to 27. Another model was a foundation built on good sand. Mm -hmm. Now, there is something the Lord was trying to teach in this place. Of course, he was making illustration with respect to the agencies to test the character of the two foundations. And that's one angle in which we can look at the models. Another angle to look at it is that what you build on each of the foundation models if they do not conform to the character of the foundation, it will show. Mm. It will show. And so easily, the builder will be betrayed. Mm. Now, the foundation that the Lord himself stands at the cornerstone is a standard. And it cannot be altered, it cannot be changed. So it depends on each person who is part of the building to come up on that foundation to make a choice whether to uh, take on the character of the foundation that the Lord is or whether to take on another character. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But the character of that which is being built on the foundation will determine whether that is where that which is built on the foundation will survive the days to come. Now, one thing is to look at the days to come. The other thing is to look at the ultimate of the goal itself. See where we are going. The ultimate. What is the purpose of his calling? Why were we apprehended? Paul said that I may apprehend that purpose for which I was apprehended. One thing is for us to know why we were apprehended. Because if we don't know why we were apprehended, we will not know what we are pursuing. Mm. We will not know what we want to lay hold upon. You know, and part of the problems we have, the great men is that we do not even know why God apprehended us. For, for some of us, it's an accidental thing. We just stumble into it. For some of us, it's the best gathering we can see. Mm -hmm. For some of us, the best kind of people you can relate with. For some of us, by our makeup, we don't like gym, 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 gym. Mm -hmm. We just like quiet, quiet, quiet. Mm -hmm. So, but God's own purpose is different. Mm. So, the challenge is for us to know what is God's own purpose. If we know God's own purpose, then we'll be very conscious of what we put on the foundation. Praise the Lord. We can fly quickly to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. After having taken note of Matthew 7, 24 to 27. First Corinthians 3. I'll just take a few verses there too, uh, from verse 11. It says, For other foundation can no man lay than that which is already laid. So, the choice is now ours. The foundation is set. 
<laughs> what comes on it is your choice. But nobody can alter the character of the foundation. He has made him testimony. And we're going to look about one or two things about um, how Christ is the foundation. You know, what is the character? What has he set forth as the character of the foundation? You know, verse 12 says, If any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, a stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. Now, talking about the foundation, for some people, the foundation is, 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 is you know, the individual's opinion or concept or idea. We can be the standard in comparing ourselves to the foundation. For instance, if issues between two persons show up, for instance, we are not taking the standard of Christ to set forth how that issue should go. We look at how we feel, how the issue touches our interest. So that means we are all turning the foundation. Christ is no longer the standard by which that is measured or judged or directed. But how we feel, you know, for instance, some people are good in opinion chattering. You can chatter opinion, you can you can chat a cause, you can you can win an argument, uh, you can feel good because <coughs> you 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 have the power of you know. IQ is high, so you win the argument and you feel good. If you lose an argument, how do you feel? Do you feel, oh, <coughs> no, 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 I can't take it. But the thing is, the foundation, the character of the foundation cannot be altered. Christ stood before an uh, Ananias. Ananias had a que has a question and he answered the question somebody slapped him from the back that's a foundation that's that's a standard he has laid what did you do the man slapped him and said don't you know the man you are talking to is an high priest he said I didn't know in the meantime I was wondering somebody slapped me at my age from the back. One small careless boy out there. But that's the foundation. Christ is laying a standard. How do I feel? How do I react? When a war is not landing at the right place in my heart. When somebody much, much younger and junior is speaking as to humiliate me. As to bring me down, how do I respond? How do I react? How do I feel? That's what is being built on the foundation. The foundation is about crucifixion. If you build something, you can build flamboyant, whatever, on that foundation. It will not, it will not bond. <laughs> it will not bond. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. Mm -hmm. It's about, it's about, I was reading in, in John chapter 19. The Bible said he carried his cross. And I was, I was imagining the time he died was the time of cold. We've been struggling to keep ourselves warm. <laughs> they stripped the man naked. My God. Yes. And placed his cross upon him. Mm. And he was to carry that cross. Mm. Jesus. That's the foundation. That's the foundation. Mm. And that's the standard. Mm. Now, you can't talk about glory, about talking about crucifixion. Jesus. Before he can step into the glory, mm. he went through this. Mm. And he said, I am the chief cornerstone. Mm. So we need to look at it because mm. when the foundation is strong, mm. the majority of the challenges and the problems we have to do, the challenge 
our ability to enter into the attainment mm. is the misgiving we have about the foundation. Mm. Our ideas are wrong. Mm. Our concepts are wrong. Our opinions are wrong. We look at it was like when that little book was given to John the Revelator. So take it. He took the little book and ate it. He said in his mouth it was sweet. As mm. Mm. So when the thing went down, mm. it, is, it was bitter. Mm. You see? There is the sweet, the sweetness in the hearing mm. about the revelations. Mm. But how many people have the experience walking to them? Mm. It is in the experience that the bitterness comes in. Mm. When, like in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7, the Bible says, He was taken to a sharers, like a lamb, mm. before the slaughterer. Mm. He had chance mm. to open his mouth, mm. but he was dumb. Not because he could not fight. If at some point he said, if I was to demonstrate my authority, I could call for how many legions? And now the whole nation will be flattened. Mm. You had the power. You had the strength. Those of us who don't even have the strength and the power, <laughs> we try to display what we don't have. <laughs> Just to score a point. Mm, Jesus. But that is building a wrong thing mm. on the right foundation. Mm. We must get the vision clear. The vision is not about revelation. The vision is about crucifixion. It's about death. Praise the Lord. Amen. So verse 12 says, If any man build any idea of how good and how precious, like gold and silver and precious stones, wood is stubble, every man's work mm. shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be re revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is praise the lord Amen. in verse 15 it says if any man's work shall be born he shall suffer loss but he himself shall be saved mm. yet so as by fire mm. now let's look at ephesians 2 just to verse 19 Ephesians 2 verse 19. Jesus. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners. <laughs> that means you should understand. By now you should have mm. accurate knowledge mm. of what the challenge is about the way it is. Mm. See, but you are fellow citizens with the saints. Mm and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles mm. and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief uh, cornerstone. Now, the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, and Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone, is about their practices and their doctrines. Acts 1.8, mm. verse 1, sorry, Acts 1.1. 1, 1. When Luke was writing to Theobulus, he said, you also qualify to hear the things that the Lord began to do and to teach. Mm -hmm. So it's about Jesus. doing before teaching. Jesus. It's about life. It's about Jesus. practice. It's Jesus. about that which has been inworked into a man Jesus. that can begin to teach. Yes, mm. well, now, if you reverse the order, there will mm. be crisis. Mm. Jesus, have mercy. If you reverse the other, there will be crisis. So the chief cornerstone began to do mm. before he began to teach. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. That's the foundation. Mm. My God. Now, when a man mm. has, has been received in his doing amongst the people, mm. when he starts to teach them, mm. 
they will accept him because he has lived Jesus. by what he's teaching. Amen. He has lived the principles out before oh. the people. So they, are, they can accept what he's saying mm. as real. Mm. Yes, yes. Because he has, he has traveled on that road. Jesus. So he can, he can say exactly what it was on the road. Jesus. Because he passed through that road. Jesus. So Luke started by saying, yes. Oh Theobulus, I must have to tell you Jesus. the things that the Lord began to do. Mm. And then he began to teach. Mm. And when Paul was going to speak, We'll come back to this chapter 2. In chapter 4, the same Ephesians, verse 9, I suppose. Mm. Paul was speaking. This is it Ephesians 4 9 now? Mm. Philippians 4 9. He says, those things which ye have both learned and received and had and seen in me, mm. do. <laughs> Praise yeah, the Lord. Yeah, so that means the things that he was teaching and doing, they are in harmony. Mm. So he can commend mm. for men to watch what he was doing. What he was saying, and then follow and do. And when they have experienced the doing, they can stand to teach it. And that's why we could tell Timothy that the things that I have committed to you, commit to faithful men. That they may also. This is the foundation. This is the foundation. Jesus Christ. Set about this, he laid this mm. as a principle, as a foundation to follow. Mm. So that at any time, as we travel on the road, we may check back on the foundation. Mm. The way we are walking, the way we are running, what we are doing, mm. are they conforming mm. to the foundation? Mm. If we are able to remind ourselves from time to time, I believe that in traveling on this way, mm. You know what Peter said? He said, we should walk out our salvation with fear. Are mm. we trembling? Yes. Those who could do that are those who are making reference to the foundation. Mm. Because the moment you look at the foundation and you are able to measure yourself. Yes. You know, you know that this is not about automatic arriving there. Mm. I mean, at some point, Paul said it was possible for him to become a reject. I mean, at that height, yeah. Paul recognized. Right. So that means he said he was doing everything with carefulness. Yes. So that he would not be found to have run in vain. Mm. So it was possible for Paul mm. to have run in vain. So if it was possible for Paul to have run in vain, it means it's possible for anybody yes. to run in vain. May we not run in vain. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know, it's a major challenge before us. Of recently, they began to be a bit scared. Mm. The, the psalmist said, There is only one gap, one step between me and death. That means between making it and not making it is a very thin line. Yes. One can cross just that thin line. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think in 1 John 2, 1 John chapter 1. Um, there was a similar thing, yeah. First John chapter 1 that Apostle John said from verse 1 to 4 is about testimony, and then we'll come back to Philippians 2. First John 1 from verse 1 it says, That which was from the beginning, that which we have had which we have seen with our eyes, mm. which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. So, for the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and we bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, 
mm. and was manifested unto us. Mm. That which we have seen and heard. Now, can we relate verse 3 to Acts 1? 1. The thing which the Lord began to do is what they have seen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. They looked at, at him and they saw. Mm. So he said, that which we have seen and now heard, they saw what he was doing. And they now heard what he was teaching. He said, that is now what we are declaring unto you. That ye also may have fellowship with us. That is, we are part of those That's right. <laughs> who are saying, doing before teaching. Mm. Praise the Lord. Amen. He says, and our fellowship, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Amen. Amen. Back in Philippians chapter 2. Here I will take a few more verses than the other scriptures we have taken. I will take this from verse 1. If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, that is, if there is any encouragement, if there is any comfort of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if there is any bores and messes, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Verse 3, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Verse 4, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the face of others. Verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Verse 6. Who being in the form of God, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God, verse 7, that made himself of no reputation. Do you know one area anyone will have problem is reputation. Anyone will fight mm. to protect his reputation. Mm. Now we are talking about he being the chief cornerstone of that foundation. Mm. So the first thing is that he destroyed the reputation. Mm. I don't know how many of us could stand to throw away our reputation. We may not know. Somebody will say that you have least idea of the capacity you have to do wickedness mm. until you are given the chance. <laughs> <laughs> that is the truth. Mm. I mean, until that chance was before Peter. He swore. I? He not die. What's the end of everybody? Die. I will die with you. One little girl said, I knew you. You look, you, know you, are, you are speaking like him. One of his disciples. <laughs> Me? I never knew him. Because the chance was not presented before him. He never knew it was possible. He did it the first time, the second time. The guy was inside cold, went before the fire, the flame. He was trying to warm himself. And Jesus was there. And they said, you, you can't deny your, even your language betrays you. Mm. You are one of the disciples. He vowed and, and swear, and I never knew this man from Adam. Mm -hmm. Jesus looked back. Peter, <laughs> you never knew me. <laughs> you never knew me. <laughs> Until a situation presents itself, you never know what you can do. <coughs> and that's why the Bible says the heart of man is so deep and so desperate and so deceitful. In fact, 
Is it in Genesis 6 when just as Noah and that generation was coming out of the flood? God just looked of man. He said, Repented me that I did man. So, because the imagination of his heart continually is evil. And yet, this is the same man. The psalmist wrote about in Psalm 8, verse 4. This man that you are mindful of him. I mean, God is so emotionally attached to man that all his thought is around man. From Genesis to Revelation, it's all about man. Praise the Lord. And if God has faith and confidence in himself that if people will make it, I also join my faith with his faith. Amen. That if Amen. people will make it. Amen. If people will fulfill his joy. Amen. That expectation of his heart, if people will be keen to it. Amen. So, verse 7. He said, he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a serpent and was made in the likeness of men. Our problem is least if reputation is gone. If we have a high disposition and attitude that make us lower than we are, and those who are low, we see them higher than us. That's what Christ has done. This is one who does not consider it robbery to be equal with God. But remove the guard and turn himself into a serpent. Throw away his reputation. Praise the Lord. Uh, That's the foundation, the chief cornerstone. Verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Praise the Lord. Um, First Corinthians chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 17. Now, this is Paul. He says in verse 17, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words. You know what Paul was saying? Gospel is two-legged. Wisdom of words is about revelation. That <laughs> Christ did not send him to preach high sounding revelations. Mm. That's what Paul is saying. Mm. See, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. But that gospel is not in the high sounding revelation, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. Mm. So the gospel is two legged. One leg of the gospel is to preach this revelation. But the foundation of the gospel that should be emphasized is the crucifixion. Amen. The cross Amen. of Christ. Jesus. For that is where the life is. I find that revelations number one it makes the heart of man to be fogged up. Both the preacher and the listener, the hearer. Number two, he does not quickly deal with the soulish man 
In fact, it helps the soulish man. But the crucifixion, it kills the soulish man. Mm. It deals with the soulish man. Mm. It handicaps the soulish man. Mm. And then the life will flow. Mm. That which is revelation will now be the outflow of life. Mm. It's not the preaching of the revelation. Mm. Because over the ages, you find men who have preached revelation. But many times you do not see life Jesus. in harmony of the preaching mm. of the revelation. Mm. Men have preached revelations and they are moral derelicts. Mm. They were morally bankrupt. Mm. They have no testimony mm. behind the revelation. Mm. When issues of life, issues of relationship, interpersonal relationship comes because challenges will come in different axes if a man is strong in this way the devil will not tempt you in that area you will look at where you can be flat in this way and when an sss wants to catch a man they can understand you for years in fact they can come and work for you without you know they will work as one of your stewards they will know your going out and you're coming in they will know the hours they will know your strength they will know your weakness the day they are coming to arrest you you don't know how they have that kind of information mm -hmm. that's what the devil does mm -hmm. he takes his time he watches you he marks you and the day is going to you will never know that there is that capacity in there but if we start out with the cross of Christ, those tendencies, the only thing that could deal with it is the cross. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's how revelation will make you feel you are there. You have arrived. In fact, there is something that could be deceptive about those who are in grace to preach revelation. Because the tendency is to believe that the fact that you understand this much, you're already there. And it is not working in your life. Then you won't know. Because the thing flows. Character and revelation are not the same. It's the cross that works out character. Praise the Lord. So, Paul said, Christ did not send me to preach Isani gospel, lest the emphasis, there is a shadow cast on the emphasis, and the emphasis is the cross of Christ. Verse 18. For the preaching of the cross, that is the preaching of crucifixion, death to self, to them that will perish, is foolishness. But unto us, which are being saved, it is the power of God. So, the wisdom of God is in the preaching of crucifixion. Because that is where life comes from. Verse 19. Let's move to verse 22. The Jew requires a sign. The Greeks seek after wisdom. We know what this verse is saying. The Jews want miracles. So, there are those who want miracles. <laughs> when you look at the, the church world today, the church world can be broken into two. There is the miraculous. <laughs> there is the church of the miraculous, the charismatic. There is another church of the revelation. We belong to that church. <laughs> the church of revelation. Apocalyptic. You understand? So, when in one direction, once you get to that mist, you know that you are looking for miracle and for signs. If you go to the other side, you are looking for revelation. Now, but look at this. The Jews require miracle. The Greeks seek after revelation. Verse 23. Then we preach 
Christ crucified. So, that means they can miss Christ in the miracles. They can also miss Christ in revelation. They can miss Christ in the preaching of the cross. He said that we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews, it's a stumbling block. Because they will miss it. They are looking for a miracle. We are talking about crucifixion. He says, and to the Greeks who are looking for revelation, it is foolishness. Because crucifixion is not sweet. It's not a sweet message. It's not even sweet to the body. It's not sweet to the soul. 23. 24. But unto them which are called both Jew and Greek. Christ, that is Christ crucified is the power of God and the wisdom of God. So that means those who are called what you are looking for, both in the miracle, in the revelation, you will get